All right, guys, here's 3.4 video, factoring and graphing polynomial functions. Before, the, func the polynomials were given to us already factored, but now we got to factor first and then graph the polynomial functions how we already know, which would be 3.3 .3 and 3.2, graphing the polynomial functions. Let's do a quick review of things that we need to know about factoring, and I did talk to you guys about that in class. Rule number one, the first and most important thing about factoring is always look for the GCF, okay? I cannot stress how important it is to always look for the GCF first. You scan the polynomial, look at all the terms, see what they have in common, and then you wanna, you wanna be able to factor out the greatest common factor between all of the terms in the polynomial. So you always look for the GCF. If not, it's not completely factored. So that's rule number one of factoring. Another thing is, second thing is, you gotta factor completely, of course. We have those skills by now of always factoring completely, but always look for, also look for differences difference of squares, of two squares, okay? Difference of squares. So if we have x squared minus y squared, we are always looking for this difference of, of two squared values. And we know how to factor that. It will be x minus y, quantity x minus y, times quantity x plus y. So we're always looking for that here in, the, in, the, in this type of factoring we're gonna be doing. Of course, we gotta use the skills we had before. So we're always gonna look for GCF. We're gonna be on the lookout for difference of squares because it, it may happen a lot here in this, in this section. And um, we can use any method you want, okay? Third, you can use, use the X factor if you like or the guess and check the guess and check. I really don't care which one you use. I'm okay with any of them. I really don't mind, okay? So let's go ahead and tackle some of the problems here. Keep in mind, we're always looking for the GCF first and then look for, and then we decide what method we're gonna use, but then always double check and say, do I, is there any difference of squares here that I can go any further, okay? All right, so let's take a look at here at problem number one. I circled the ones that I was, that there's many I can do here in the time allowed. So number one says x to the fourth minus seven x squared plus 10. First thing I do is I scan it and I say, um, well, negative seven and 10 and x, yeah, they don't have anything in common, x to the fourth, x squared here. I could extract out, uh, factor out an x squared, but the 10 does not have any x squared to give, so they don't have anything in common. All right, so I'm done with looking for the GCF. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use my guess and check method because that is one of my favorite and more um, efficient method to use. So I'm gonna um, think of the two values, the two factors that when multiply gives me x to the fourth. That would be x squared times x squared. Those are the two values that when multiply gives me x to the fourth. Two values that when multiply gives me a 10, immediately I think of two times five but it must be negative because it has to add up to the middle term. So negative two and negative five does multiply and gives me a 10, but when I add it, it gives me a negative seven. So that is, I, I guessed it correctly, there we go, I think, it, I think it's gonna work. So the way we set up, we saw this in class, is the same way we did it before with when we were doing, uh, when we were factoring quadratics, same way. So instead of an x here, now I have an x squared on both. They take priority here, they go first. And then here are my factors, x minus two and x minus five. Then I look at it and I say, are they difference of squares? Two perfect squares. Well, x squared is a squared number, but two is not, okay? It would have to be a perfect number, like four, nine, 16. So these two are not perfect square values. So we are done, okay? So there we go. The answer is x squared minus two and x squared minus five, okay? It's very tiny space there, but we can make it work. I'm gonna actually use some scratch papers here so we can have more room because I have a hard time with this little, tiny little room. All right, let's try number three. And it says x squared, I'm gonna write it bigger. I'm sorry, x to the fourth minus 10x squared plus nine. Okay, I like it bigger like that so we can work on it. 
All right, let's scan for the GCF. First thing, they don't have anything in common. Again, x to the fourth and x squared. They could both be divisible by an x squared, but a 9 doesn't have anything here. So in negative 10 and 9, uh, there's really nothing that are divisible by both here, and this one is missing a leading coefficient. So there's no, there's no GCF here. We follow the same procedure. What are the two factors of x to the fourth? It would be x squared times x squared. And I kind of like after you do this for a while, you already know what to look for. And then 9. Well, 1 times 9 and 3 times 3, it's, you know, those are the possibilities I see here. But immediately I focus on the middle term, always. How do I get a negative 10? Well, if I make negative 1 times negative 9, it works. And making negative 3 times negative 3 only adds up to a negative 6, so that doesn't work. Okay? So there we go, we already found our factors. So x squared takes first place here, and x squared takes first place here. These two factors take first place, and the second one, minus 1, minus 9. Okay? Then, like we said here in our notes, we're done. Looks really nice, but we always look for difference, difference of two squares. And there we go. The number one is so special. The number one can be considered so many things. The number one can be considered one squared. The number one can be considered one cubed. The number one can be con considered one to the fourth. The number one is so special that it can be considered to in, certain, in, in so many ways. So I can totally consider a one as a one squared. Is it still a one? So that is a difference of two squares, and so is x squared minus 9. So immediately I know that I can factor it x, uh, the x squared minus 1 squared to x minus 1 and x plus 1. As well as this one right here is also a difference of squares, so um, it would become a x minus 3 and x plus 3. Okay. So there we go, I factor completely, my x's are to first powers, I have the factors nicely. I guarantee you if you FOIL this two binomials right here, you'll get an x squared minus 1, and if you FOIL these two binomials right here, you would get an x squared minus 9, and if you FOIL the two top binomials, you would get back to x to the fourth minus 10x squared plus 9. So I know I factor correctly, here's my answer, we can go ahead and put it right here, x minus 1 x plus 1, x minus 3, and x plus 3. There we go. Okay, so I have all the answers there. All right, now let me get another um, scratch paper here so we can keep on going. Let's go ahead and do number 10. Now, now let's go ahead and do exactly what they ask. Factor, then sketch the graph of the polynomial, label the axis and the y-intercept, a lot of the students, they forget to read the instructions carefully. So I'm going to factor it first, then I'm going to try to uh, graph it, and then make sure that I have all the x's and the y-intercepts uh, labeled. First thing I do <clears throat> when I look at this is, before I even start factoring, I say I have a cubic, because the highest power, the highest degree is 3. So I know I have a cubic function, and my leading coefficient here in front of my x is a 1. It's a positive 1. So I know it's a positive cubic. It should look like this, okay? Positive cubic for, go from negative infinity up to positive infinity. I already know the shape of my graph just by looking at this. At least it gives me a pretty good idea of what I will be graphing down here, okay? Now I'm ready to go ahead and tackle this problem. I have a x cubed, I'm going to write it right here. I have a y equals x cubed minus 16x. Okay. First rule, I'm going to write it down. First, look for the GCF. Is there a GCF? Well, x cubed minus 16x, they both of these terms can be div divisible by an x. So if I divide this by an x and divide this by an x, I can factor out an x. An x cubed divided by an x is x squared. And a negative 16x divided by an x is just negative 16. I know I've done it correctly because if I FOIL back in, if I multiply this, I'll go back to my original problem. So I know I've, I've done it correctly. So y equals x times the quantity of x squared minus 16. Then, like I said in our, our notes right here, 
Hopefully this is all the notes we need. After we look for the GCF, we look for differences of squares, just in case there's any. And there it is, right in front of us. So y equals x times, we're so good at difference of squares, we know that x times x will give us the x squared, and negative 4 and positive 4, multiplying it gives us the negative 16. Okay? So there we go. We know we are, it's completely factored. And I know what shape this is going to be. It's going to be from lower up to higher, okay, to, to positive infinity. We know the shape of it. Let's solve for the x-intercepts, okay? So if I set x equal to 0, it only happened once as an answer, so we're going to cross there. If I set x minus 4 equal to 0, and I add 4 to both sides, we get x equals 4. So I only get this answer once, so I cross there as well. And then I have x plus 4 equal to 0. And when I subtract 4 from both sides, we get x equals negative 4. So the negative 4 only happened once, so I know I'm crossing. So I have 4x intercepts at negative 4, at positive 4, and at 0. Okay, we're going to cross, cross, cross. So we're going to, um, those are our x intercepts. But then we also have to look for the y-intercept. The y-intercept is when you plug in, you plug in 0 for x in the function. You plug in 0 for x in the function. Let me lift up over here. You plug in 0, you plug in 0 for x in the function so you can see what the x-intercept will be. We had y equals x cubed minus 16 times x. Well, I'm going to replace the x's with 0. So this is going to be 0 cubed minus 16 times 0. Well, that's 0 minus 16 times 0 is 0. So the x-intercept is at 0. I plugged in a 0 for x. I got a 0 for y. There is my y-intercept. Okay, so I got all the information I needed. I factored it. I looked for the GCF. I looked for difference of squares. I solved for the x-intercepts. And I checked for the y-intercept. So if you could transfer all that information to here, you would be able to graph it. Let me see if I can fit in the window here. If I can transfer all that information to here, I'll be able to graph it. At 0, we cross it. And negative 4, 1, 2, 3, negative 4 is right here. And positive 1, 2, 3, 4 is right here. I already know the general shape of my function. So I'll cross here, cross here, and cross here. And the, sure enough, the x and the y-intercept is at 0, comma 0, okay? So that's pretty much the name of the game here. You're going to be factoring, looking for GCF. Always check to see if there's a difference of squares happening. And then you can work the same way we were doing before, the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. All right, let's do another one just to make sure we're doing it right. I picked number 9. And... Here we go for number nine. First step, look for the GCF. Let me write it bigger, because I don't feel like I have enough room in this papers, because I write so big. So we have g of x, the name of our function, x to the fourth minus 10x squared plus nine. GCF first, okay, always, always GCF. And they don't have anything in common. As a matter of fact, this is exactly the same question we did for number three just a second ago, okay? Let's take a look and see what kind of function we have. We have a quartic, it's to the fourth power, so it's called quartic, but we have a positive leading coefficient. So we don't have any GCF, but I do know the shape, the general shape of our function. Because it's quartic and it has a positive leading coefficient, it's gonna be some sort of opening up um, function like this. So I, pretty, I have a pretty good idea of what is this function is supposed to look like. Let's go ahead and factor it. We, we did this already on problem number three, okay, in this same video right here. So we're going to get x squared and x squared, because those are the two values that multiply, it gives me x to the fourth. And I know that negative 1 times negative 9 multiplies and gives me 9, but adds up to a negative 10. So negative 1 and negative 9, all right? And then we look for difference of squares. We've done this problem before. So g of x equals x minus 1, x plus 1, x minus 3, and x plus 3. 
So um, let me fix my values here because they, they look a little junky. There we go. So there we go. We factor completely. The next step is always the same thing. Look for GCF. Take a look at what shape is going to be and solve for the x intercepts. How many times I'm going to cross the x axis or bounce at the x axis. So if I set x minus 1 equal to 0, I get x equals 1. That's one of them. If I set x plus 1 equal to 0, we get x equals negative 1. If I set x minus 3 equal to 0, we get x equals 3. And if I get x plus 3 equals 0, we get x equals negative 3. Since 1 only show up once, we're going to cross there. Because negative 1 only show up once, we're also going to cross. And we're going to cross here, and we're going to cross here. Because each of these x's only showed up once as an answer when we solved it. Now I would like to solve for the y-intercept. Okay, The y-intercept, we replace every x value with the 0 in our function. So g of, g of 0 for x, and then 0 to the 4th power minus 10 times 0 squared plus 9. 0 to the 4th power is 0, minus 10 times 0 squared is still 0, plus 9. So 0 minus 0 plus 9 is just a 9. So as you can see, I plugged in a 0 for x, we got a 9 for y. Okay? So I have everything I need for this problem up here. So hopefully on the window over here we can see, let me see if I can put it perfectly side by side. Alright, so let's go cross at all these points and make sure we touch x, uh, the y-intercept at 9. Alright, so it looks like we're touching at 1, crossing at 1, crossing at negative 1, we're crossing at positive 3, and we're also crossing at negative 3 right here. Did I mess it up? Oh, 3 is right here, dang it. Alright, 3 is right here. So 1, 2, 3, and negative 1, 2, negative 3. Alright, so we got all of our crosses. And, and now we need to make sure that we touch at positive 9. So I'm going to pretend that 9 is right here. So I need to touch it over there. It needs to open up according to our shape. So I'm going to start from positive infinity. I'm going to cross here. I'm going to go to my y-intercept. Come back and cross at positive 1 and a positive 3. And finish going to positive infinity. I like to put that in there just in case they ask me what is the behavior, what is the end behavior of my function. Okay? So that is how you're going to be doing this on uh, factoring worksheet, factoring and then graphing it. As you can see, if you pause it and rewind it, my steps are always the same. I always look for the GCF. I have a general idea of what my shape, the shape of the function, the polynomial will be. Then I factor the GCF if there's any. I look for g difference of squares. I solve for x-intercepts, and this is how you s solve for x-intercept. You get every single factor, and you set it equal to zero. And then you solve that little tiny equation. And then um, you solve for your y-intercept. And then you know how to make this shape appear from this x-intercepts and the y-intercept. Okay? So um, I hope that is enough problems to help you with this worksheet. And, um, and that should be enough for you. Good luck on this worksheet.